I still work for the Dayton Daily News in Dayton, Ohio. But it's like I live there because um, I have my computer. I, I get on their thing and I hear the news, the newscast, what they think are the top stories, and I go, okay, I can do a cartoon about that, you know? And, and my editors, they're always amazed that I am so attuned about what's going on in Dayton, Ohio. He worked for the Dayton, or the Chicago Daily News and then the Dayton Daily News as an editorial cartoonist. And after he won the Pulitzer in 1981, he was being courted by bigger papers. The syndicates had been asking me to do a comic strip, uh, which is very rare. I mean, you know, usually you have to go and beg to do a comic strip to the syndicates. But I had been syndicated with my political cartoons. He really liked, we liked living Dayton and we liked our kids growing up in Dayton and he said he'd always wanted to do a comic strip and maybe that would be a good outlet. But it, it ne never dawned on me that I was gonna be doing it every day of my life for the next 30 years. I had no idea. So I'm going to art school, uh, but in the meantime, I meet this girl, fabulous girl. You know, well, it turns out her father was the dean of students at Washington University. And in art school, he did what he did best, which was draw cartoons for, you know, the newspaper and the yearbook and stuff, instead of going to class, because nobody ever told him going to class is a good idea, until he met this one professor who said, you're a great ca cartoonist, do cartoons. He said, when you go to figure drawing class, don't draw a figure. Exaggerate it, exaggerate the figure, make it into a cartoon. When you go to painting class, paint a cartoon. When you go to design class, design a cartoon. I said, Mr. Burnell, won't they get mad? He said, Mike, you're already flunking, it's okay. And then much to my father's dismay, he started getting A's and B's and actually graduated. <laughs> it changed my life. I knew then that cartoons was my destiny, was my goal, was my bliss. I love to do them and and obviously the world is telling me, you gotta do this. If you try to make up something, it's not as real as if you just do it right out of your life. And my, a lot of my stuff is right out of my life. The comic strip came about pretty much out of his head, characters that he'd always played around with. And then the dog is him, he's the dog. And one time I proved it because the dog drinks out of toilets. Well, he doesn't do that, but uh, he does eat out of trash cans. And I caught him. He was trying to wean himself off of Fritos. So Marion came in one day to my office, and she said, what are you doing? And, and I came up, and, and I had, uh, I'm licking my finger and getting the crumbs of the, of the Fritos down at the bottom. And she says, oh my God, you're the dog. I never realized I was a dog. I, I always thought the dog was just this entity that I was trying to do funny cartoons, but I was the dog. And once I learned that, the strip all came together. And I've been having a great time ever since. I'm in about 700 papers around the country, around the world, so it's great. He is a very prolific creator. He comes up with thousands. I mean, all these pages here are filled with 50 or 100 ideas, which he won't use. When I start a cartoon, I'm just writing, writing ideas down, and then anything that hits my mind, I start, uh, I start developing it. Any other cartoons would use the very first one and be done for the day. Whoa! I still don't know if I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know, and so, so it's over there. Sometimes the standards are a little too high, and there's a deadline, and then there's standards, and I say, okay, go with the the best of all these horrible ideas you came up with, any one of which most cartoons would kill for, you know. And this was, my daughters are always saying to me, Dad, you've got a bat in the cave. And I was thinking, who could say that? So I have, I have Lincoln uh, saying uh, to Roosevelt, Teddy, you've got a bat in your cave, which I thought was a, was a funny idea because he probably does have a bat in his cave. But that's how I come up with ideas. I think of things, I write things down that my kids say or that people say on the news or that I, I see at a grocery store and then I try to make it into something that's funny that people will hopefully laugh at. I know when I'm hitting my truth, it'll hit the truth of a thousand other people out there. And then I always get good reaction from people because they say, oh my God, it's exactly true for me.